Hello and welcome to another one of my Umbraco tutorials. We'll be continuing the sections set uh, thing today, except for we are actually almost done with this section. Now we're going to have a look at a bit more, uh, but just before the tree, we're going to have a look at how to create um, a place in the database for some things that we need, and also how to create our own API, um, so to speak. <laughs> so let's get started. So first we're going to open up what we've been doing, uh, yeah I think, I've, no I haven't done anything, right, and then we will want to go to our plugins and our example. So in here we again have the person section that I showed you last time, that is very easy. So the next thing we want to do is create, um, well you can call this whatever you want, but I like to call it object, so object, there we go, then inside here, we're going to add a class, I'm going to call this person, oh, sorry, person, there we go, okay, and this is going to be the constructor, so to speak, for our um, database, and the, uh, da the database table is going to be a table full of different people, or a person, so to speak. Um, so yeah, that will be what kind of person have a name. They can have a uh, first name, yeah, first name, last name, so on, so on. So the first thing we want to go, we want to do is just decorate this with table name. And you can see we need to use Umbraco Core Persistence. And after that, we want to decorate it with a string of the table name. We'll just call this person because it'll be the person table. You can call it whatever you want, but I like it like this. And then we can just go and have a, an empty constructor, so we'll say public person, open close, and open and close, there we go. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to define the primary key column. And we need the database annotations for that. We're going to open it, and we're going to say auto increment is going to be equal to true. And now we can define our properties. So we need the integer, which is going to be the uh, or public int, and then we need the ID. I'm just going to do a couple of gets and sets for this. And then we're going to have a string. Call this first name. Some get sets for this. Go. And another string which will be last name and get and set and then that's the last one we're going to do public override string there's a dot to string and says already oh, made one based dot to string but it's going to return the first name plus a space plus the last name and this is using something called Petapoco, I think it's called, which is something on Braco ships with a standard. You just need to include the uh, usings up here. Um, so yeah, and this will be uh, what we'll be using later to create a table, get information in and out of the table, so on and so on. Okay, perfect. Now the next thing we want to do is create the API for this, which we will use and technically everyone else could use if we let them, so to speak. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a resource. So we're going to add a JavaScript file, and we'll call this person resource. There we go. And then this is going to be some Angular that we're going to use here. So we're going to do Angular dot module. We're going to want to inherit from the Umbraco. Oh, resource and then we want to get hold of the factory there we go and then this or not get hold we're gonna make a factory and this factory is going to be called the person resource as the file is called after that comma and a function if I can spell all right and then HTTP then we're just going to open this, close it, and there we go. Now we have our 
building block, so to speak. Okay, then we want to return. Um, first we want, okay, and these are the methods we want to return when calling this. So, first thing we want is get by ID. Sorry. This will be a function. And we want to include the ID in this function. Just put this back. Okay, we want to return the HTTP request. And we want to use a get method. And then we want to go to the back office forward slash example forward slash person API. You'll see why we'll use that in a minute. And then we'll do get by ID and then the uh, quote string ID will be equal to and then add in the ID. So that was the first one. This next one will be save function. I'm going to include a person here because we want to save the person object. I want to return again the HTTP. Go. And this time I want to post. We want to post to the back office to the example. And then again the person API. And we want to say post save and then we want to use this method called angular dot 2json and we want to do the person object to json and the la oh, sorry and the last one we want to use is delete by id what, we, what do we want to delete we want to delete the function oh sorry uh, we want to pass in our id because we're going to delete a person like that. And we want to return the HTTP dot delete. And again we're going to go to the back office to example. Sorry that was my phone. The person API. And then delete by ID. And the ID is going to be equal to again the ID. There we go. That's all we need for now. Although we need to remember to add this and then I think everything looks as it needs to. If not we'll probably get an error. One succeed. Okay that's good. Next we want to add now that we've added a person resource is we want to add our a package manifest. So I'm gonna add a new item. So package dot manifest There we go, just delete all this. And open up. First thing we want is a JavaScript. Oh, yeah, don't have text indentation right now. And like this. And then we're going to want the single brackets, and this is going to be located in for tilde forward slash app underscore plugins slash example, because that's where we are at the moment. And then we're going to, um, let me just see a minute, yeah, that will be the next thing, but they're going to be located in the back office, and again you'll see why later, and then we'll say person tree slash, and then we're going to call this the edit controller dot js. And that, that's, yeah, we're going to get to that later. Might as well copy that. Person tree. We're going to use the delete controller. These we'll create later, but we're just going to reference them. Um, if we're allowed to, I don't know actually. Hopefully, it won't be a problem. Comma, comma, and then the last one. And this is just going to be inside the example. And this is, of course, going to be our person resource. JS. Don't know what will happen if the if we can't find these two. We'll see. If not, we can quickly create them. So yeah, that seems to be pretty valid. 
Okie dokie. Right, last thing I want to do is create the API controller that .NET can can use. Also, oh, that the JSON can call, and then .NET can do something with the code uh, to get what we need. So we're gonna close this up for a minute. We're gonna add a new um, folder. I'm gonna call this controllers. There we go. And we're gonna create our controller. Uh, MVC5 empty controller or need and just gonna change the highlighted you have to leave the controller part of it so person and then API controller there we go so this is all we need we're just gonna delete this we just have a very basic controller so first of all, what we're gonna do is we're gonna delete this and we're gonna inherit from the Umbraco authorized JSON controller and that's from the web editors namespace yeah, yep that is correct and then we're gonna create our different methods in here so first we do public and I enumerable and we want to do the enumerable of the person and we need to include our person here which is inside our example dot objects so here we have our person the one we defined earlier the objects folder so yep and then we're gonna call this method get all like that open and then we're gonna say var query is equal to and then we want a new SQL and uh, why can't I do this oh sorry that's ah, damn system sounds capital SQL and we're gonna use the use the core dot persistence namespace so SQL and then we're gonna do a dot select and what we're gonna select we're gonna select everything with the star and then from person and we'll create that table in uh, in a later episode and we'll return the database context and then the database and then we wanna fetch the person and then the query. There we go. That's the get all function. Then we want to do public person get by ID and make sure to check that these functions are called exactly the same as they were in the resource. So get by ID. We're going to pass it an integer. Oh, sorry. Don't know what happened there. Int ID. Do much the same var query, and remember we're inside a local na uh, a local area here, so they can of course the uh, variables can be the exact same name, won't affect anything. Query is equal to new SQL select all from and then the person table where the person and then we're going to do our link statement whatever you want to call it where the ID is equal to the ID that we've passed in from here and then we're going to return the database context dot um, oh sorry database fetch the person go and then the query and then we want to get the first or default because otherwise we might send more back and we just want to get one by ID otherwise we could say get more by ID or get all by okay now well there probably won't be more by ID but if you had another field that you wanted to do that with and then we want to do the save method so public post save and here we want to pass in the, just a person object so there we go and we're gonna say if person dot ID so the person that we're sending in if his ID is greater than zero then we want to go to the database context database we you could probably make a variable with this for example called DB and then db dot update for example that'd probably be faster 
we want to update the person object that we have sent. So if there is an ID and it's greater than zero, and you'll see why zero greater than zero later. I know there's a lot later, but if I had to go through everything in one long video, it would be too long. And I've already made a video once that was 45 minutes. That was way too long. So sorry about that. So database context database, and then save person. And then when this is done, no matter what, this is going to be valid. So after that, we want to return person. There we go. And then the last method, public. And they have to be public, remember that, otherwise you won't be able to use them. Public int, and then delete by id. Pass in an integer with an id, of course. And then we're going to return the database context database and then delete what do we want to delete we want to delete the person and the id is going to be the yeah poco or primary key which is going to send in the id here save it and what have i done wrong oh yeah post save that is of course a person i thought i already done that sorry there we go person the return type will be again that was my phone telling me it's charged sorry about that okay so all done here going to save it and build it and don't know why since the package element was not declared it was that's visual studios weird things i think right so that's it for this round i'll be making another video maybe tomorrow or the day after when i get time hope hopefully uh, to again to finally now make the tree and then we'll be doing the dashboard afterwards and then some stuff inside to actually show you you can create delete update and so on from within the custom section and tree so thanks for watching and see you next time